Hello guys, in the last video I briefly mentioned that you can overload your constructors as well as other methods in your class. Uh, so I figure I had better go into a little bit more detail about that. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, if you recall, a while ago there was a video about overloading functions, and that was when you'd have, say we had a function like this, output, it would either take an integer, so this says, you know, something like that. And then if we make that function again, it has the same name, but we can have it take a different argument. For instance, maybe, uh, I don't know, an integer pointer instead. Um, we'll do something really fancy like this. Uh, okay, so just quick review on overloading uh, just normal functions. So now if we call output with like 10, and then if we make an integer, uh, make it 8, and then we call output with the address of that integer, like that, uh, which basically will get converted to an integer pointer, you know, just like normal. Um, but you notice, you'll notice that we're calling output first with an integer, and then with essentially an integer pointer. Uh, so this is called overloading a function. When you set it up, uh, you're basically writing two functions with the same name that take different arguments. And uh, the compiler will figure out which one you're trying to call based on uh, what you pass in. So there we go, we got uh, both the functions acting, the function acts differently depending on what you pass in as an argument. So that's overloading just normal functions, but if we have a class, once again, I'll just use A because I can't think of any proper examples. I'll just give it an integer, like we almost always do. Uh, so we'll have one constructor take an integer, yeah, we'll do the same kind of thing, and then we'll make another constructor that takes an integer pointer, and let's implement these down here, uh, so I'll set n equal to a, and then down here, if you pass in the pointer, then it'll automatically dereference that pointer, so uh, if you want that functionality, this is one way to implement it so that uh, you don't have to worry about dereferencing in the uh, actual construction of the object. Though, it's totally up to you whether you want to overload your constructors. Um, though it is necessary. Well, it's not necessary. Well, never mind. <laughs> Forget what I was going to say. All I'm showing you is that you can make constructors that have different, that have different behavior based on uh, what arguments they have. So now let's construct our first A object, call it A1, or actually I'll call it inst1, because it's the first instance. Let's do a nice underscore. And uh, I'll call that with a number like 5. And then I'll make an integer 8 again, and I'll make a different instance, and this time I'll pass in um, that address of that integer again, which will get converted to a pointer, and uh, there you go. So, let's see, let's also make a, just a simple output function, just to show what these end up being. Oh, and then I have to call it. Oh, gee, what I do? Line 25. Oh, I, I, I often actually forget this. I forget to declare the return type when I'm doing that. But I think that should, that should fix it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay, so you'll notice output still works just normally uh, and is assigned correctly even though the first instance has 5 and the second instance we pass in the address of an integer that is 8. So, um, 
we're still constructing instances of the class A, but our, we just have a, some different behavior in the constructor because we're passing different arguments. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to do it like this or some other way. Like, you could do it like that if you wanted, and then you wouldn't have to write that other constructor because this will just dereference, or well, since this isn't actually a pointer, we'd have to dereference to properly illustrate this. You could dereference the ref, like, <laughs> never mind, forget I'm saying anything. Um, but yeah, you can overload your constructor, it's basically all I'm trying to, t trying to say. And then other methods as well. Um, like, okay, let's say you had uh, increase. So you could, you either call it with no arguments, or you call it with an integer. Uh, and uh, basically what, what we'll do is we'll have increase without any arguments is just going to increment and by 1. And then if you do want to specify a number, what did I do, i? Specify a number more than 1, then that'll accommodate. So this way, so now let's call inst1 dot increase with no arguments and then let's see let's actually make these the same and we'll call that increase with like six or something so uh we have instance one which is going to be five and we should increase that which should make it six and then instance two starts out at six and we'll increase it let's actually start that out at or no, it's, it also starts out at 5, sorry, because integer n is 5, and then we construct it with that. And then we increase it by 7, so we should expect 6 and 12 uh, for the different outputs. Okay. Yep, there we go, 6 and 12. So you can overload just normal methods as well, meaning uh, have different behavior based on what arguments you pass in, or whether you pass in any at all. And uh, you can have as many of these as you want. You could write uh, another increase that maybe takes three integers or something like that. I don't know why you might want to do that, but it all depends on what kind of functionality you're looking for in your class. So it's up to you. Thanks for watching, you guys. That's it for today. Uh, if you liked it, rate it high. If you didn't, feel free to rate it, rate it low. If you have a question, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.